Okay, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're tuning in. If you missed today, you missed 9.05, which is critical points. What we wanna do is be able to not only find where a critical point exists, but explain you know, when and why we would call it a critical point or when and why that does exist. So we did a little reteach this lesson. If you're interested in that reteach, reach out to me. But otherwise, we're gonna go over how to find critical points, what they are. So let's start first with a definition that we'll need for a critical point. Now, critical meaning important. And for us, um, important parts of our graph, we might you know, signify maximums, minimums, asymptotes, you know, all sorts of crazy parts of our graph that are very specific. You know, so if we're talking about a critical point, we're talking about some of those important points. Now, a very broad definition, but something we're going to start with, a critical point exists on f of x, some function, at some point if the derivative at that point is equal to zero, or it's a critical point if the derivative at that point does not exist. Now, one of these is much easier to picture than the other. For instance, if we have a derivative equal to zero at a certain point, that means the slope is equal to zero. So our slope at that point would be a flat line or a horizontal tangent. So when I see something like this, I'm thinking of a horizontal tangent at all of those points. Now, if the derivative does not exist, well, there's plenty of ways for a derivative not to exist. It could be discontinuous, or maybe it's a vertical tangent line, or maybe there's a vertical asymptote there and there are no points there, right? So maybe some type of discontinuity or um, maybe even a vertical tangent line are some common um, kind of characteristics of a, of a derivative that does not exist. So that's kind of, you know, we have two different criteria for critical points. And that just is how it would look or how I would interpret those criteria. So let's look at an example of when we'd actually, what we'd actually have to do. So we're gonna find the critical points of this function g of x. And here's this function. It's a crazy cubic function, two x to the third minus three x squared minus 36 x plus four. Well, if I wanna find the critical points, let's look for the definition. That's gonna be when f prime of whatever number equals zero or when f prime doesn't exist. So clearly I'm gonna need my derivative here. So step one is gonna to be to take the derivative, which in this case, instead of saying find the derivative, we'll just say find g prime of x. That's my derivative, so let's do that. Let's just use the power rule here. This is just a polynomial function. So we just move the three down in front of the two, right? That's gonna be six x subtract one squared. Bring the two down, that becomes negative six. Subtract one, that's six x to the first. And then 36x minus 36x becomes negative 36. And that plus four is a constant, so that'd really be plus zero. I'm not gonna include that. So now that we have our derivative, we wanna find our critical points. Well, remember, there's two different ways. One way would be if our derivative is equal to zero. Let's start with that one. And let's actually see, is there a number x that I can plug in to make this equal to zero? Now you can try guess and check until you uh, go crazy, but remember that we have a way here to actually find that by setting it equal to zero and then working backwards by solving. So if you wanna think about step two here, we're gonna set equal to zero to find our horizontal tangents. And I'm gonna abbreviate here to be H-O-R-T-A-N, horizontal tangents. And of course, we're gonna solve. Now for this here, we'd have to think about how do we solve equations like this with quadratics and exponents in several x terms. Well, one of those ways is to try factoring. So I could try to factor this quadratic. I could use factoring by grouping because the first term is not one, but I'm just gonna try to factor out a GCF and we can see that all of those terms, we can factor out a six. And since that is the case, now I can factor this quadratic much easier. And I would get, let's see, x minus three and x plus two, remembering that 
negative three and two need to multiply to give us our C term negative six. That's why one's negative and one's positive. And also, since one's negative, one's positive, they're gonna to subtract to give us that negative one. That's why I chose to make the three negative. Now that I have these solved, or actually I'm still in the process of solving factored, remember that we would set each one of these equal to zero. Now the six doesn't have an X on it, so we don't need to set that one equal to zero. But the X minus three, we do need to set equal to zero and the X plus two, we do need to set equal to zero and we get two solutions. So you add three to both sides, you get X equals three and subtract two from both sides, you get X equals negative two. <clears throat> now, this was just finding this part, when we will have a horizontal tangent. Um, so what I should do, should I also check for D and E? Are there critical points that would make this derivative not existent or undefined. No, this is only going to happen, this second condition, or we're really only going to check it when I have things like log functions because you know the argument can't be negative, fractions because the denominator can't be zero. You know, those types of functions where there are certain rules and domain restrictions that apply. Um, but for us right now, right now, what we need to know is that we're only going to check in our problems. Now, there's a lot of problems in the world that you can check, but we're only going to check when we have a fraction. And we would check the denominator. So that's not the case here. So really, this is, or these are, our only two critical points here. And once again, that's going to be where our graph is gonna have horizontal tangent lines. So once again, finding the derivative, setting it equal to zero, that gave me everything that I could possibly have as far as critical points. Okay, now let's do one more and let's talk about um, some old school natural log derivatives. Now this one is kind of tough for a variety of reasons. One of them is you have to remember how to take the derivative of a natural log function. So we'll review that formula and we'll find our critical points too. Now, clearly since we're doing critical points, we still need to find F prime of X. We only have F of X. So this is a natural log function. Remember in our notes, I told you how to find the natural log, the derivative of the natural log of U and that derivative is gonna be one over U. So put the inside on the bottom and then multiply times that derivative. So in this case, our u function would be that x squared minus one. So let's go ahead and let's find f prime. Since it's natural log, we're gonna put one over whatever that inside is, x squared minus one, times the derivative of the inside. So what's the u prime gonna be there? What's the derivative of this inside going to be? Let's well, see, the derivative of x squared is two x. The derivative of negative one is zero. So really just two x there. So if we rewrite this, our derivative function is one over x squared minus one times two x. And we can rewrite this one more time because I know this looks a little crazy and we can think of that as two x over one. And when we rewrite that, that two x is gonna go on top and that x squared minus one is gonna go on the bottom. There's our derivative function. So now let's think back to that last problem and what it takes for something to be a critical point. It will be a critical point if this derivative is equal to zero or that derivative is undefined. So we're gonna split this up into two types of problems. The first one is gonna be when the derivative is equal to zero. We can set this whole thing equal to zero. So we can do something like this, zero equals two X over X squared minus one. You might find a shortcut here and you might wanna cross multiply here. When you cross multiply, zero times x squared is still zero. So we're really just solving to see when zero is equal to two x. So divide by two and zero divided by anything is zero, right? Two times zero is zero. So here's one of our critical points. And once again, this is gonna be one of our horizontal tangent lines because that's when the slope is equal to zero. And this was kind of like case one, but we also remember wanna to check to see when f of x, f prime of x, our derivative is d and e or undefined. 
And this is really where, since we have a fraction as our derivative, we really want to just take a look at when our denominator is equal to zero, All right? Or if there are any domain restrictions, like if there are a square root, we know that there can't be negatives on the inside of a square root or in the argument of a natural log or log function. But for fractions, we know that we can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction. So we can just set that denominator equal to zero. That would make that whole derivative undefined. Now we can add one and square root it here, but I just know that this is a difference of perfect squares, x plus one, x minus one. So we have two more solutions here, x equals negative one and x equals positive one. So where x equals zero gave us a horizontal tangent line because the slope was zero there, x equals negative one and x equal one are critical points because f prime of x is undefined at those values. So maybe there's a vertical tangent line there or maybe a vertical asymptote or maybe it's discontinuous. There could be a number of things in there, but we basically just cannot find the derivative of that function at those points. So some things that will help you today is number one, being able to find your derivative. That is absolutely imperative using your power rule or in some special cases like natural log. Okay, find that derivative and then identify, okay, what are you looking for? Well, one of those is gonna be if that is equal to zero, set it up equal to zero and solve. And then if there's a fraction or some kind of crazy function, Specifically with fractions, set the denominator equal to zero to see if you can get an undefined um, derivative. And that's where I got the rest. So these are critical points. These are important points of our graph. We're gonna do more in the following days to identify exactly what these critical points are and name them a little bit more specifically. But in the meantime, just identifying these is really our objective.